Hey, it's Jonathan here for ProM USA. Today I'm going to show you how you can motorize this slider for under 100 bucks. So just to give you an idea of how versatile a motorized slider can be, I'm actually doing the shoot entirely by myself. So you can see how it can be used for interviews, self-interviews, uh, tutorial vids like this one, uh, not just fancy time lapses. So let's take a look at the components. Everything here is made to work with our slideways slider, but it's still possible that it may work with yours depending on the physical characteristics. The belt and pulleys I'm using are made for 3D printers and you can find them on Amazon very inexpensively. One of the custom uh, parts that we'll be using is actually a 3D printed part. It's the part that connects the two ends of the belt together. It's got a slot that the ends are then clamped into and you can find the file as a free download on our site. Now this may work with a variety of motors, but the one I chose is by Black Bolt. It's called the O-Bolt Mini Panning Head. You can find it uh, for 40 bucks on Amazon, and I'll include a link in the description below. But there's a reason why I went with this one, and it's not really that heavy duty, so you may not want to use it on the platform unless you're mounting a GoPro. The key here is that it's able to rotate continuously 360 degrees, which is necessary to move the slider platform all the way down the rails the motor is going to need to make many revolutions to do that, and this was the only one that I found that could. Uh, it has three speeds, time-lapse, normal, and fast. Time-lapse we're not going to be able to use because the motor doesn't have enough torque to pull the platform, so we'll stick with normal and fast. Normal is what I used for landscape time-lapses, recording video, then speeding it up many times in post. Or if your camera has a time-lapse mode, you can take individual pictures to compile a time-lapse. I used the fast speed at the beginning of this video for camera B, so it's a good speed for real time. So the first step is going to be to attach one of the arms that holds a pulley, and we'll use this 3 8 knob here. And underneath, uh, at the end of the slider, there's a 3 8 threaded hole, so I'll tighten it in there. And then we're going to attach the pulley on top. Uh, first we'll take the cord wrench screw. I'm putting two uh, of the brass washers on here. That's going to help this pulley rotate smoothly. And we don't want to tighten these uh, uh, small set screws because we want it to rotate. And then this wing nut we're going to put on top is just to hold it in place, not to tighten it down. You, don't, you want it to still be able to rotate freely, so don't tighten this all the way. Now coming to the opposite end here, this is where we're going to mount our articulating arm. Uh, but first you need to remove the little pieces at the bottom here to access the quarter inch screw. Then we're going to take the 3 8 to quarter inch adapter. Then we'll thread that into the bottom of the slider. Make sure your arm is locked so it'll make it a little bit easier. Then you can loosen it. Now we're going to mount the motor itself. You need to unscrew the quick release, um, pull out the mounting knob, and I've already removed this rubber piece here. Then we'll put the quarter inch screw in through the bottom. Then we'll take the pulley, place that on the bolt, and we're going to, using the set screws at the base, Tighten those up. And then I'll put a wing nut on here just to, uh, just to be safe. Then we'll screw the motor onto the articulating arm. Release the arm. And now this is where you want to make sure you've got the motor aligned with the two openings in the slider so that the timing belt can pass through. Next we're going to attach the timing belt. If 
first we'll thread one side through the opening in the slider around the pulley, back through the other opening. Pass underneath the slider carriage. Back through the other opening on the other end, around the motor's pulley, back into the slider. Take one end of the timing belt and you're going to want to slide it into the slot on this custom printed part. Put it about halfway. And we'll use our Allen key to tighten this in. And you want to make sure the grooved side is facing inward and the set screws are facing outward. So once you get that side in, you want to take the opposite side, pull it, make sure everything is taut. You want to mark off about halfway. And just taking a pair of regular scissors, just snip it off. So it may be a little difficult to attach both ends uh, while the belt has tension on it. So just loosen up the arm and pull the timing belt off of the motor. Then it'll be a little bit easier to fit them both into that slot. Okay, so once you've removed the tension in the belt, just slide the opposite end of the belt into the slot and then tighten the set screw with the Allen key. You wanna make sure the set screw gets right up on the middle of the belt, otherwise it could uh, make the belt kind of twist a little funny. So try and get that centered up as good as you can. Okay, next we're going to reapply the belt. Loosen the arm, make sure it's lining up properly through the two openings. and then tighten the arm back. Okay, now we're ready to attach the slotted part to the slider carriage. So we'll take a 10 30 seconds screw. We'll drop that inside that last hole here on the top of the carriage. Make sure you get it lined up to the threaded hole in the slotted part, and then we'll just tighten it in. So that's it. Turn the power on and you can see the slider is fully motorized. This of course is on the fast setting, which is what you'd want to use for shooting real time videos. There's a couple things we'll want to look at. Um, first is the type of rotation. So there's uh, 360 degrees with intermittent stopping. That could be useful for long exposures. Then we have the uh, just side to side panning, stop, pan back, stop. Uh, we won't use that for a time lapse. Um, we'll want to use this one all the way to the right. It's just the continuous revolving. That's what's going to keep our carriage moving forward and backwards. Then for the speed, uh, I mentioned earlier, uh, time lapse won't work just because there's not enough torque to move the slider carriage we'll be using normal and fast. And then you've got the direction of rotation. Right now it's in the off position. If I turn it towards me, it's going to revolve counterclockwise and that's going to bring the carriage towards us. And then if we move it clockwise, that's going to move the carriage away. This has been a really fun project to work on. I was really surprised uh, how easy it was to install. And of course, it's incredibly inexpensive for what you're able to capture with it. 
If anyone does try out this build, please let me know in the comments. Uh, let us know what motors you're using. I'm sure everybody would be interested in how the install went. Again, you can go to proamusa.com to download the 3D printable part, uh, as well as the full kit if you'd like to purchase it from us. I hope this video has been helpful. If it has, please leave a thumbs up, subscribe for more content, and thank you for watching. Thank you.